Today's lesson is on the graphs of rational functions. So let's start with uh, something that we are kind of familiar with. We've already done questions like this. We can look at the numerator, numerator and the denominator. We can see a whole bunch of stuff that we need to do with graphing. Let's start with the restriction. X cannot equal negative 1. What does that mean on the graph? So the denominator tells us about a vertical asymptote. We have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. So there, I've drawn it on the graph. What I want to do is see what's happening. So this next piece is a little bit of a newer concept for us. We want to see what's happening around on the behavior around that asymptote. So on the left side, where's the asymptote? On the left side of the asymptote, are we going way up here? Is our graph, is our y value or is our function approaching positive infinity? Or is it coming down? Is it down here? Is it approaching negative infinity? So to figure that out, I'm going to sub in a number really, really close to negative 1 on the right-hand side, and then on the left, and a number really close on the right-hand side would be um, f at negative 0 0.9999, right? That's really close to negative 1, but it's just to the right of it. That will tell me what my behavior is on the right-hand side of the asymptote, and I'll do the same on the left-hand side of the asymptote. So you can get out your calculator and sub those numbers in and I will show you what we get. So the proper way to write that as x approaches negative 1, but I'm going from the right hand side, that's, that's this number here, 0.999 negative that I'm subbing in, I found that my y value or my f and x value is approaching positive infinity. So if you look at the graph, I'm going to draw an arrow up at the top here because I know that my graph is going up there on that side, on the, on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, as x approaches negative 1, but on the left, I sub in this number here into my question, my original function, and my function values turn out to be a really large negative. So they're approaching negative infinity. So that means on the left-hand side of my asymptote, my graph is coming down like that. Getting really, really close, but coming down like that. So there's some information that we have from our vertical asymptote. So let's look back at the question, what uh, the original equation of the function, what else have we got? Looking at the numerator, what does the numerator tell us? The numerator tells us we have a double or a bounce root at x equals negative 3. So when x is negative 3, I'm going to put a dot on my, uh, I'm going to put a dot at negative 3 here because I'm going to actually bounce there. Now probably because I can see my asymptote below it here, probably it's going to bounce down. It's not going to bounce up, but we're going to get some more information still. Let's look what else we've got. What else can we see? So there's my uh, point at negative 3. I've got a y-intercept. That's an easy one. Sub in f at 0. So on the y-axis, I'm going to put a dot up there at 9. And the degree. So here's the big one. The degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by 1. That means we're going to have an oblique asymptote, not a horizontal asymptote. It's one or the other. So how do we figure out where the oblique asymptote is going to be? We're going to have to do long division here. So long division or synthetic division, of course. I'm going to do long division. So uh, you go ahead and do that on your own. It's good practice um, keeping that skill up to div division, whether you do synthetic or long. Press pause, and when you come back, you will see the full division done here on the screen. All right, so you've finished your division, and we've got a remainder, but as you know, that's inconsequential. So the equation of my oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 5. So how do I graph that? This one, you can, I've shown you two different ways you can graph using the intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, or you can graph using uh, y equals mx plus b slope and y-intercept. So when I graph this green line, I'm going to have a y-intercept here, right? That's going to be my y-intercept. So I'm going to have a y-intercept at 5. And I, it's going to have a slope of 1. So if I, I could just do uh, rise 1, run 1, or I could use the, the x-intercept by subbing in 0 and getting negative 5. So whatever we do it, that's grade 9, how to graph a line. 
So you put that line on there. There's your oblique asymptote. And now we just have to fill in the blanks with our graph. So we've got a few dots on there already, a few uh, points. Then I'm going to do the best. I'm going to bounce here at negative three. Remember, that's a bounce. Let me do that first. So I'm going to do the left side here. We're going to bounce, and then it's going to come along the come along this oblique asymptote like that. And then I'm just going to curve down. And you can always sub in extra points if you want to, to be sure. I could sub in uh, negative two. I could find f at negative two and sub that in just to get some more coordinates, but you don't need to. If a question specifically asks you to find some kind of test values, then you would have to do that. So on the top section, I'm diagonally opposite this here. I'm on the top section. I know I've got my arrow up at the top and I've got a dot at nine. So I'm just going to curve down through that dot. I don't know where I'm turning. Maybe I'm turning here, coming back up along like that. So this is just uh, the best possible graph we can do at this point for this example. Functions can be written in three different forms, standard form, factor form, transformed form. And when you were in grade 10, we called that vertex form because we only talked about quadratics and they had a vertex, but all of our functions don't have vertex. So we kind of call that transformed form now, or transformation form. The previous example we had was in factored form. It was all factored for us. So in general, it looks like this. It depends how many factors you have or what your degree is, but everything is factored. And then this would be greatest common factor would be your A value. So factored form looks like that. Now you should have already watched, we're gonna do transformed form next, but you should have already watched these two videos. If you haven't, you're gonna to have to stop the video and watch it now because there's information in there that you need to know and you'll get lost on the next example here without that. Example one, determine the equation of the following rational function. So we have two different views of the same function here. We've got all of these pieces that we're going to try and figure out for the question. First of all, the numerator. The numerator, we have to come up with an equation. The numerator comes from the zeros. So we've got a zero here. We've got a coordinate three zero, or we write x equals three. So the factor would be x minus three. That would be the factor in the numerator from this zero. And that's the only zero we can see. Denominator. The denominator will uh, will figure that out the denominator by looking at a vertical asymptote. Now look at the vertical asymptote here. Look at the behavior on the right side and on the left side of the vertical asymptote. Notice how this function approaches a vertical asymptote, negative two from the left and from the right. So uh, it, we've got the same behavior. They're both going to posit, the function is going to posit infinity on either side of the asymptote. And from the previous video that you watched, you know what that means. It means that our denominator is going to be x plus two squared. It's like a bounce asymptote, if you want to think about it that way, because both ends, both ends of the function are approaching, are moving in the same direction at that asymptote. So we have x plus two squared. What about an oblique asymptote? Does it look like there's an oblique asymptote in this graph? No, there isn't. Does it look like there's a horizontal asymptote? Well, it does look like there's a horizontal asymptote. It looks like there's one here at zero, but the problem is we ha it goes below. Look at the graph is going below the x-axis here. Remember that horizontal asymptotes can be crossed and it's not uncommon for them to be crossed. The horizontal asymptotes are really to help us to define the end behavior of the function. So in the middle, in kind of in the meat of the function, in the, in the main where you have uh, things changing rapidly, rates of change and things. Um, it could cross a horizontal asymptote, but at the ends it won't. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. That means, remember your degrees, that means the degree of the numerator has got to be less than the degree of the denominator. That's what must happen in order to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So let's set this up in factored form. We're gonna put all this information together. I'll move it up here because I kind of ran out of room. That is what we have. There's our numerator piece, our denominator piece there. And let's look at our degrees. The degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is two. So that 
gives us this horizontal asymptote. Now we just have to find A. So to find N, we pick a point on the graph and we are going to use 0 and 1.5. We're going to sub that in for X and Y. Subbing that in, we just do a little bit of math here and in isolating for A, multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the denominator, multiply both sides by 4 and then divide both sides by negative 3 and we get A is negative 2. So here's our equation of the function in factored form. So that's the factored form of the equation, of the graph. And we just have one more example to do. The next thing we're going to do is going to be in transformed form. So what you're looking at here is factored form. This one is transformed form or transformation form or vertex form if you want to think of it that way. So D and C for, let me just write it in here, if we were in back in grade 10, we would have y equals a x minus d squared plus c, like that, depending on your textbook publisher, it might be h and k. But the vertex is d and c. When we have rational functions like we do today, instead of it being the vertex, think of it as the intersection of the asymptote. So the intersection of the asymptote is now your dc. We only use this form if the graph, so look at the pictures of the graph, if it looks like 1 over x, which this does, it could be transformed, it could be, but it's got to be two um, basically symmetrical shape or reflection shapes of each other, and they have to be in diagonally opposite quadrants, diagonally opposite sides of the asymptotes. So when you have that, then you can use transform form. You can't use transformed form with our previous example. Remember, we had same end behavior at the asymptote, so we couldn't use transformed form for that, that function there. So we're going to get, up, get an equation of transformed form of this graph here, zoomed out and zoomed in, and then we're going to check. So I, it was pretty hard to see this, so I um, see this point negative 3, 2 uh, on the graph. Uh, didn't uh, it wasn't very clear when I put it in so anyway I just typed it there normally you'd be able to find a coordinate yourself so we we're going to do both forms transformed form and factored form so let's start with transformed form that's what the function looks like now in these functions we use a or k it's just like when you had a uh, quadratic up here we did we use the k value or the a and usually it was the a because we're more comfortable with that so because the K and the A both, when you're looking at a graph, they both visually, you can't distinguish from them. I can't tell if it was a vertical compression or a horizontal stretch. So I'm gonna just use A, I'm not gonna use K. K will be a one. So look at the, the intersection of your asymptotes. Intersection of your asymptotes, that'll be our D and C. So that's at negative two, four. We're going to go back down to the equation and we're going to put our D and C value in there. There's the, the um, asymptotes put in for D and C. Now all we have left to find is A. That's all that's left. So to find A, just like you've always done, you pick a point. That's why I had to tell you this little piece here. You pick a point, you sub it in. Let's do that together. So we're going to sub in negative 3, 2 in for x and y. We'll put the, remember this is the x, this is the y. Really, it takes five seconds to write that little x and y, and it can save you a lot of heartache by not putting them in the wrong spot. People tend to want to put the first number they see in the first spot, which is wrong. So we're putting 2 here. a is a numerator. x is negative 3 plus 2, plus 4. That gives us 2. Um, well, let's subtract 4 here. Subtract 4. Negative 2 equals a over negative 1. So I'm just going to change that to a negative a. Divide by negative 1, and we have 2 equals a. So what we've got here is f at x equal, so I'm going back up to this piece, the only new thing I'm going to sub in there is my 2 for a. 2 over x plus 2 
plus 4. So there's my transformed form. Now looking at factored form. Factored form. So we're looking at this form right here. We've got factors in the numerator and the denominator. Let's start with the numerator. How do we get a factor from the numerator? Do you remember? It's from the x-intercept. So we have an x-intercept at negative 2.50. So how do I turn that into a factor, negative 2.5? I can't have decimals in these factors, right? So um, I'm going to write it instead as negative 5 over 2, because that's negative 2.5. Multiply both sides by negative 2, or by 2, and I get 2x equals negative 5. Bring the 5 over, and there's my factor for the numerator. 2x plus 5 is my numerator factor, which I got from the x-intercept. How about the denominator? The vertical asymptote gives us a denominator. Vertical asymptote was at negative 2, so we have a factor for the denominator. So what have we got here? We've got a numerator and a denominator and an A. Now there's no more factors in the numerator and there's no more vertical asymptotes, so there's nothing else for the denominator. So we're going to find A. Now there's another way to find A other than the one I did in transformed form. So I'm just going to show you another way to talk about how to find out where A is. The horizontal asymptote, if you look at the graph, the horizontal asymptote is at horizontal asymptote is at, at that didn't work out well, at um, y equals 4. So that means the degrees are the same. Remember when we talked about how you get a horizontal asymptote other than at 0? It's by leading coefficient divided by leading coefficient. So a horizontal asymptote, when it's not 0, we get that from y equals, we take the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. And in our case, we need that to equal a 4, or 4 over 1. So looking back at the equation we have here in orange, right now I have a 2 already in my numerator. So what would I put in for a? I've got a 1 down here. What would I put in for a to end up with a 4 over 1? So a must be 2, so that when we expand it, I'll put it in red, a must be 2, so that when expanded, we will get the 4 that we need here. So that's another way to find a. So I'm just going to write that out here. Our equation is f at x equals 2, I'll just put it in the numerator, but you can put it in the middle if you want to, times 2x plus 5 over x plus 2. So that's another way to come up with your a value. And it might be faster if you're quick at picking that up. I think that's kind of a faster way to do it, but um, it's certainly um, slow and steady wins a race, right? Sub in a value, work, work it out slowly, and get your a value that way too. We had another piece in the question. It said, check to see that your two equations match each other by simplifying. So here's my transformed form. And here's my factored form. And right now, the only thing that looks the same is the denominator. The numerator does not look the same at all. So what we're going to do is check by expanding. We're going to expand them both. Let's go to purple. So let me first expand. Um, I can expand this side here. It's easy on the right. That's going to give me 4x plus 10 over x plus 2. So we're going to put it into standard form. Everything's going to be expanded out here. Now over to transform form, I'm, I'm going to need a lowest common denominator here so that I can um, expand it out. So the common denominator would be x plus 2, x plus 2. So I want an x plus 2 here, which means I have to put an x plus 2 in the numerator and I'm going to multiply it all. All I had there was a 4, so I'm going to multiply that by 4. And let me move it up, I think. Um, yeah, I'm going to run out of space. Well, I'll move it to the side. You should never really write to the side. I'm just going to write to the side because I want to keep it all together here. Always start a new line. I'm going to move it over. This gives me... Uh, whoops, so I've got f at x. I'll move it up, actually. Move it up here. f at x 
equals, so I've got one denominator now, I've got x plus two, and my numerator is two plus four times x plus two. That is two plus four x plus eight. You can see where this is going, I hope. We get four x plus 10 over x plus two. So these two pieces, of course, are equal to each other here. So that was how I checked by expanding into standard form. So that's the end of the lesson on um, standard form, transform form, and factored form of rational equations.